Hey mushroom peeps, I'm so excited, I'm back. Um, I know I've been gone for a little bit. Um, I've gotten some emails like, where are you, you still alive, whatever. Um, so yes, I'm here. I have been hauling but trying to get my new um, grow. I've been trying to figure out what to call it. Do I call it the new grow? Like when I'm telling people I'm going to work. The grow, uh, the, the farm, the mushroom farm. Um, I've been calling it my shop, like I'm going to the shop. I don't know, let me know what you think. Anyways, so I'm here at the new shop. Um, it's about 2,000 square feet and I'm gonna take you on a quick little tour. It is by far not finished. Um, we got the keys on May 1st, and today is May 31st. So this is, uh, sorry, it's so loud. There's actually a Ferrari. Let me turn around. <laughs> oh shit, you can't see that. Anyways, there's a Ferrari truck behind me. Um, some dude across the street um, rents 2,000 square feet to hold his Ferrari and Maserati. Go figure. Um, so I got the baller warehouse. <laughs> Anyways, so um, bottom line, uh, I want to show you around uh, some things that I've been doing. And uh, yeah, I got to stop because this guy, he's messing me up. All right, see you in a second. All right, so I'm going to kind of take you through um, the place in terms of actually how I would start a batch, if that makes sense. So again, this is the first room. This is where I was just filming from anyway. Um, the first room here is, or the first part of the, the, the shop is the uh, the mixing bagging station so my mixer is there i'll go into an, an detail on another video of how it works but my mixer's here um, i basically dump all my substrate the soybean hulls fuel pellets water all goes into this um this mixer uh, there's actually a water bar in the mixer so um it's uh, it's hooked up directly to my uh solenoid um water meter and so i just put in how much i need for that particular batch and uh, the, the water is done, and I just have to add everything in there. I have um, a scaffold that I bought um, because it's really high. I don't know if you can see, like it's tall, this thing. So I have a scaffold, which kind of does two things. One, I uh, put the soybean holes and the p uh, fuel pellets up on here, and then uh, I use this ladder to kind of step up on there, and then I just have to throw everything in. Um, and then after it's done mixing, it's like a big KitchenAid mixer. Um, all the substrate gets bagged um, by this pneumatic bagger, um, which was really fun. I had a guy um, that built it for me. I've had to make some adjustments and tweaks myself um, and with one of my employees, but um, we got it, I think, working pretty good. Um, there's a lot of duct tape, as you can see, but it is all good in the hood. So uh, that'll just, all this stuff, everything that, um, you know, I'm doing in this new grow um, is brand new. So with the exception of the lab equipment, um, the lab equipment and the, the everything, the table, the flow hoods, the everything is the exact same. Everything else but the lab stuff is brand new though. All new systems. So obviously all new mixing, all new sterilizer, all new shelving for the grow. No more tents, even though I said I was going to do it, but I have reasons for that. So everything is new. And so I'm learning, I'm having to relearn how to do all this stuff all over again with all this new equipment and new rooms. So, okay, so this is it for mixing and bagging. Okay, the next um, place that I'm looking at here is, um, it's gonna need to have pallets on here. Um, I'm Once a month, I'm having my uh, fuel pellets and my soybean holes delivered from my local uh, feed store where I get my stuff from. And uh, so they, they did one run, like a dummy. I was like, yeah, no, I don't need the, uh, the pallets um, because we had to unload everything by hand. Um, I don't know, I have a pallet jack. But anyways, whatever. Next time, I do wanna get pallets to put this stuff up on because I'm using the hose a lot. Like almost every day, I'm having to hose down this floor, which is another thing I absolutely love about having you know a shop, a warehouse, because no more wood floors for me. I mean, God, I mean, I can use the hose like you know, to my little heart's content. But, uh, but obviously the bottom bags, you know, there's some water there, but it should be fine, but I'd rather have them up off the floor on pallets. So, soy holes and then the, the pellets, um, are right close to the mixer, which is to my right here. Um, so everything is really close. So grab the pellets, the soy, put them into the mixer. Um, right behind me is the, um, my new sterilizer. And I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail on this, uh, number one, because this is kind of someone else's design. And if they, uh, you know, 
it's someone else's design and uh, I'm just not gonna go into that um, and it's got its own quirks and I'm still figuring that out everyone's kind of got their own take on how they want to do it uh, I will say though that my Bubba's barrels I absolutely love I think that system and how Bubba's has did the neoprene and you know stainless steel all that stuff um, I absolutely love it I wish that they had it in a larger format um, and that's the reason why I had to sell mine is because I'm gonna be doing a lot bigger volume here and I would have had to have like a lot of, you know a lot more um, barrels I already had two and it just wasn't gonna be enough because um, I need to be able to do only one or maybe two batches a week and it, the barrels just they weren't enough for how much volume I'm gonna be doing but um, so I still love those and I love the design the design is just it's hands down it's it's best out there but um, anyway, so that's the new sterilizer. So you get started at the mixer, bag it. It goes directly into the sterilizer. I actually just finished uh, a batch sterilizing, which is why I have this bay door um, open right now to let some of that steam out because it's very hot in here right now. It's hot and humid and uh, it's only 72 degrees outside. And I mean, it's probably only like 78 in here with that, that heat um, going. But when it's like 90 something degrees, um, I'm gonna have to literally look at the weather a week out in advance to see okay if I normally do my batches on Wednesday you know it's gonna run for 24 hours just like I do with bubbles but if it's gonna you know if I normally do it on a Wednesday but I see that Wednesday is gonna be 100 degrees and then you know it's in the 80s on Tuesday I'm moving my stuff to Tuesday if that makes sense uh, so I just need to look at the weather a little bit more even though you know we're still indoors so okay so I will take you into the lab slash office area all right, so right now I am gonna call this the office slash lab slash incubation area. Stuff is really a hot mess. They're saying that they're gonna be done by the end of next week. It's already been 30 days. Uh, it was supposed to be two to three weeks. Um, so I'm like dying because I have zero mushrooms at this point. <clears throat> Everything in the cabin right now is totally unplugged. Um, I harvested my last, mu mush last mushrooms, I think, uh, on Monday and today's Thursday. So I have like zero money coming in and a lot of money going out. Um, yeah, so anyways, um, all right, so eventually, this really is gonna be just the office area, you know, with the fridge, the whole nine. I mean, it's there's just stuff everywhere. You can see these boxes behind me. That's for more shelving, more of this, uh, uh, you know, this uh, steel or aluminum, whatever shelving, whatever it is, metal shelving. Um, so behind me, I'm just gonna turn, I don't have one of the selfie sticks right now. Um, behind me is the lab equipment, and uh, again, it's the, it's the same setup. It's in a similar space, too. I'm just going to turn that a little Similar size, rather, that is. Um, what I don't like about it is, you can see, there is carpet here. I don't like the carpet for a couple, a couple reasons. I would love it if it was just the office, but it's all kind of a combined area. So, you know, what happens with carpet? Carpet harbors bacteria, germs, and mold one thing that's happening is you know this door right here leads to the warehouse part the, the part with the concrete and all that where we just were so like I said I'm hosing stuff down every day because like, I have to I mean, maybe I don't have to do it every day but right now while there's all this construction going on I have to and I'm still gonna have to a couple days a week bottom line the water you know I try to keep it in a certain place you know we squeeze you the whole night but it still gets that carpet a little wet I do not need mold happening here at all certainly not where this lab area is so I've got a dehumidifier going right next to it um, I've also got some fans uh, I've got like a more industrial fan you know to, to dry it up um, and I've got my air conditioner in here so all those things you know, pulling humidity from the air which will help keep the carpet dry and keep it cool in here because like I said the whole rest of the warehouse with the exception of the grow the fruiting room so everything else nothing is air conditioned except for this little area with like a little box air conditioner and the grill and uh, I'll go over more of that in detail I've got this shelf uh, shelving in here um, I just spawned that shelf yesterday and I know why it's still in here this is you're gonna love this so me and my employee Ben we just put together the shelving yesterday before we spawned it and we put these casters on here because we have to roll it, you know, obviously from the lab into the incubation room. So that door over there goes straight into the incubation room. Whole long story, with the casters on there, the shelves are too tall to fit through the damn door by like an inch, not even in it, like three quarters of an inch. So pretty much, you know, when you're building uh, or building out a spot, 
at least for me, if something can go wrong, it's going to go wrong. You know, um, there, there has been nothing so far that has gone according to plan. Down to something as simple as shelving. Like, how can shelving, you know, get screwed up? Well, mine did. It's too tall. It's an inch taller than the door. So, basically, he's going to have to come back. My, my guy is going to come back and, and uh, chisel it off or slice it off with some machine tool that he uses. I don't know. But, you know, just yet another issue. Um, so, the last thing on here, because I know someone's going to be like, oh, this room, you shouldn't be, you know, using the lab, you know, blah, 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 with all this other stuff. So, if you see all the, no, you can't. There's, like, all kinds of duct tape. <laughs> Every time we've done lab work, we've uh, duct taped um, <clears throat> or, or painter's tape with this thin plastic, which is, you know, again, that's not foolproof. It's just uh, a Band-Aid until we can get a better system going. We had thought about uh, doing a whole other drywall section, but again, I'm like broke as a joke now. This thing has cost, you know, tens of thousands more than I thought it was going to. I mean, my budget was 10 grand and phew, I passed that a long time ago. Um, so, so yes, yeah, so I'm not putting up another drywall. So I think we're just gonna do some kind of simple like curtain type situation, get it as high as we can and call it a day. The last thing on this is when we're doing lab work, especially through the summer, I mean, it's already hot, sunny in the summer, but because it's closed off and there's like no air, I don't have positive pressure happening in there yet. Uh, I've got the HEPAs and I'm, I'm gonna have my third one in there, my uh, the fungi perfecti one. So I'll have a lot of airflow um, within, but not, not air coming from the outside in, if that makes sense. So I, I don't know, it's gonna take me a while to get things straight. And I know, I know I'm gonna have a lot of suggestions, which I'm, I'm very grateful for. I probably won't be doing a lot of them yet um, because, you know, I, I'm just, I'm in the weeds. So, all right, so here's the lab. And uh, I'm gonna take you outside that door after things get spawned, and they'll be on the racks, and I'll show you the incubation room that's just through that door. Okay, so this is the incubation room. So one thing, um, you know, even 30 days into this project, you know, there's gonna be things that I'm like, damn, I wish I did it different. Um, there are some things for sure. This is one thing that I wish I could have did it different, but this is the best I could have done. Like, it's not like, oh, I made this too small. I already knew it was gonna be too small. Um, we'll see how small <laughs> it is. But uh, anyway, so obviously there, I only have one, well, technically now two, because I just did that other uh, rack yesterday. But I have one rack that should be ready to go. Um, actually, let me just show you these bags. One thing that I've noticed, um, and this is supposed to just be a tour, but I just gotta show you this real quick. So, this is my very first batch here. This is uh, 525, th these were done. Today is 531, so it's six days in. I have never had good, as good a colonization as I had, or as I have right now in these bags. And I know it's twofold, one, is because uh, it, it, probably the biggest part is mixing. So, you know, when you're mixing by hand, obviously things aren't, they're not getting, you know, as mixed as good. You know, you've got some, some bags might be uh, more water heavy than others. Some might have not enough soy, whereas other, you know, has too much soy or, or vice versa, you know. So it's just not as good as like literally putting it in a big mixer, like you're mixing a cake, you know, a cake batter. So the mixing is on point. Um, and because of that, because, um, and, and the bagging, my bagging was on point with the exact amount of uh, pre-measured amount that I need in the bag. So th there's plenty of room for the filter patch, plenty of room for the filter patch <laughs> and uh, spawning, um, meaning like, you know, to, to move around. You know, I don't have too much substrate in there, so I got like this much room to like mix the bags, you know, once I spawned it. So, I mean, this is six days in and these will definitely be ready to go in the grow at 14 days and uh, I, I just couldn't be happier. Uh, so that, and then also just the temperature. Right now, this room here is not um, temperature controlled. It will be. Uh, the roof, not the roof, the ceiling mm, is not even on here yet. They're supposed to be doing that. It's supposed to be done by Tuesday. Today's Thursday, and hopefully they'll be done this weekend. So once the ceiling is on, uh, we're gonna put a portable AC in here um, to help keep it around 75, you know, between you know, 75 degrees or so, 70 to 75. And, um, and then there will also be an exhaust fan that goes out through the front of the, um, the shop. And uh, that, that's, uh, that exhaust fan is gonna connect to uh, the grow. So one last thing, I'll just turn it around. Uh, again, that's the door to the lab. So the racks are just come, going to come straight from the lab 
into here. So it's, it's really, I, I try to really lay it out really good. Um, so I think I'm accomplishing that. So I will take you now into uh, to the grow. Actually, one thing I'm gonna uh, show you before we go into the grow is an HVAC system that I'm having installed. The HVAC system alone is about $11,000, which was completely unplanned for. I did not know at the time that I was gonna need it. Um, that's a whole nother topic. You know, I'm always saying that, but it's true. So 11 grand of extra cost that I didn't anticipate was just from HVAC. HVAC. So that big old unit, um, you know, all the duct work. So um, that ducting there is going outside the grow. That's gonna be my fresh air intake. So the fresh air intake into the grow, you see all that uh, ducting there. So I have a huge unit, a four ton unit, that is going to be not only cooling down the grow, again, only the grow. It's not cooling down the rest of this at all. The rest of this is uh, not air conditioned, um, but uh, it's cooling down the grow and providing the fresh air intake all in, in one. So, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's, I had to do it. So. Okay, so this might be one of the last times that, um, that you can see and I'll be able to see the grow like this. There's still, there's no roof. No, I keep saying roof. There's no ceiling. They're putting the ceiling in. Um, if you see all these, oops, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Up there, you see those, uh, they're like in twos, the, the little, um, the little ducks or whatever. Uh, there's eight of them and they're all going to be getting dropped into the ceiling, um, through the grow so that they're, it's evenly spread the, um, fresh air intake you know, slash AC, they're all getting dropped into the ceiling. And um, so I can't wait for the ceiling to be up and to see all this. So the ceilings, um, the ceilings themselves, I guess are 10 feet, but the, um, it's gonna be like a, um, a drop ceiling type situation, not a regular drop ceiling, they're uh, uh, panels, they're drop panels, waterproof, like, like they're, they're kind of panels meant for this. So that's why you see the two kind of sections. Um, but where that silver stops, um, that's going to be, you know, what I see. So it's eight feet tall. Um, you know, I thought about, you know, I could have made, I could have made them 10 feet tall. Um, you know, the, the, the bottom of the ceiling, like where we would be. The only reason I didn't do that is a, uh, if I did need the extra space and needed more vertical height, um, I could have did that, but I don't, like I said, I'm going to be limited by how much uh, incubation space I have. That's my limiting factor, not the grow space. The grow is 30 feet long by uh, 16 and a half feet long. It might even be 18 feet long, um, but it's, it's big, it's big, it's, it's big. So, um, so that's good. So I don't, and I don't like being on ladders anyway, so I didn't need to, them to make it any, any taller. Uh, and all that would have did is add uh, cubic footage, which is gonna jack up the air costs, you know, even more. So um, another huge expense, probably out of this whole expense, uh, it was like eight grand, I think, were from these floor um, drains. Floor drains, you know, that's something that um, I'm really happy to have. You know, coming from the cabin, obviously where I had to vacuum every single day, um, it, you know, it, it sucked to do that. And in here, it just wouldn't have worked. So I had to have these um, floor drains installed, and they're French floor drains. I've got two of them. Um, obviously, that's the doorway. Um, but yeah, it was, they had to dig five feet, uh, five feet, actually six feet, I'm sorry, six feet down into the cement. So they were jackhammering for like a week <laughs> and my neighbors um yeah they were not feeling it um, but they're they're really good guys so um they, they put up with it but um yeah so i've got water lines coming in here um i'm gonna have uh, my electrical stuff is like right on the outside you know its own like dedicated lines and stuff that will operate um the humidification system which is different it's ultrasonic misters instead of the totes with the um pond foggers, you know, I'm, I'm done with that. I'll probably still keep some on hand in case, you know, my, my disc, uh, I'm sorry, in case my uh, misting system fails, but um, no more pond foggers for me. And um, that's pretty much it. So this silver stuff, by the way, that's actually gonna go the whole way around. Um, they're not done with that. So it's gonna go, um, they're, they're, let me, behind this. So there's the, the silver, <laughs> silver stuff, which is, um, a, uh, it's the one side of an insulation material. So we've got this insulation material, um, hard, heavy-duty plastic. 
uh, and then drywall. It's like all like layers kind of like a lasagna to ensure that, um, you know, the, the drywall and then, you know, the cement stuff, well, not that we need that cement, but, um, you know, that it's all secured and waterproof and uh, it's not gonna give me any issues. But that silver is gonna go the whole way around and it's gonna give me that reflective um, touch that I wanted it to have just like with my, my, my tents. I really wanted to redo my tents. On that tent situation, because I know this video is, oh my God, I can't talk. I know this video is getting long. Um, I had wanted to bring my tents, you know, from an economical standpoint, and I really like them. The problem with the tents is going back to, same thing, I needed a floor drain. Well, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna have to cut into my, um, the tent somewhere and have that drain and this, that, and the other. I mean, it was all these different things. You know, I, I can't pull my, I couldn't ever pull my, uh, casters, uh, I'm sorry, my shelving on the rolling casters, you can't pull those into um, tents because there's a lip like that big. I mean, it depends on the kind that you have, but I mean, I had like lips that big, so I can't pull in, you know, the shell, so whereas now I'll be able to um, push them through. Again, assuming we cut off the tops and they can fit through these doors, but I'll just be able to push the shelves in and um, load the bags um, on the racks we're gonna build. So we're not you know, putting those same shelving system in the grow. I'm not using the black ones, you know, the plastic ones. I'm not using those anymore either. We're going to build shelving um, out of uh, pressure treated wood, two by fours. And um, you know, they'll probably be two by four by eights, maybe two by four by tens. Um, you know, I wanna do as little cutting as possible. So I'm going to have, uh, we, we're still doing the math on it because I don't have to do it till next week. Um, I'm trying to decide though whether to have the shelves, you know, just two shelves running along against the sides. Um, let me see if I can, okay, so you can see the other side. So two, you know, running against the sides here, or whether to have, um, you know, a smaller shelf here, you know, a shelving in the center, and then shelving on the side so that there's two walkways. Basically two walkways or one walkway. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm erring on one bigger walkway down the center is kind of what I'm thinking, but we'll see. I'm gonna do the math and figure out how many blocks and blah, 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 blah. Um, oh, last thing, you see my hot pink pallet jack? You know, that's, you know, that's totally me. Um, what else? I think that's about it. I think that's about it. That's, that's the place. Um, so that's it. Um, one last thing, I'm gonna try to make a quick little second video um, on a uh, happy hour. I'm gonna have another happy hour because I'm sure I'm probably gonna have a lot of questions or comments or suggestions. Um, and I'm over 2,000 subscriber. Woo woo! Thank you so much, and uh, especially to all the new um, all the new subscribers. I appreciate it. Um, so again, today is Thursday. It's probably not enough time to do it tomorrow for people to know. So I don't know the following Friday, maybe next Friday, and hopefully by next Friday. Honestly, this should all be done. So maybe I do it next Friday and do it here from the grow. So check out my kit page, um, which is in the, the comment section. The kit page has uh, links to everything or, or most things that I've bought for the old grow and for this new one. Um, and then you can just click on it and take it uh, straight to Amazon or whatever and uh, stay fabulous and uh, Wakanda forever. Peace.